Alright, I ended up putting all of the material I had into the beaker. This should be about 10.4 to 10.5 grams of the sodium peroxide mixture in there right now. Hey there! If you haven't seen the first episode of the Rocket series, uh, you can go click up there somewhere. It'll take a few minutes, but it's very important because it has all the information about the project. But if you already have seen it, great. In the video I mentioned that I want to make my own hydrogen peroxide. Because of the... It's getting more and more hard to get cleaning products and stuff like that, including hydrogen peroxide. So, I want to make my own. Just the nerd style. Uh, a common method is the anthraquanine process. Uh, Cody's lab did a video on this. A uh, very popular word making uh, hydrogen peroxide. But it's kind of... It's not hard but it's kind of intensive. You need a decent amount of glassware and the right chemicals. That's not going to be worth it. For me at least. I found a video by Astrochemistry YouTube channel. All credit due to him. They had a very interesting process up on their channel. And they actually used sodium metal to do it. If you're interested in making your own hydrogen peroxide, then this video is probably for you. But I must warn you, I'm using a very interesting method. So there are no guarantees that this will actually work. But if you watch the whole thing, then you might learn something. Even if it doesn't work, I'm still going to upload it onto my channel because I think the chemistry is still very interesting. In one of my recent videos, I made a uh, sodium metal aggregate. I'll leave a link up there where you can watch it right now. It's technically sodium, but it's very impure. And so I'm going to have to try a few different methods of doing it right. I'm very curious to see if I can actually do it because this sodium is very impure. Okay, got the jar opened and it's time to take it out. Uh, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer here. Be safe when you do this. I'm not responsible for anything you do to yourself. This is pretty darn safe. It's not that dangerous. But I, I thought I'd just mention that just in case. As long as you're wearing gloves and goggles, you should be fine. I have a fire extinguisher right here, a little mini one. I'll put that down here just in case things go a little wonky, but they shouldn't. I, Nothing should go wrong. Alright, so all I gotta do is take, out, take the piece out of the mineral oil, dry them, and put them in this can. This is the vessel I'll be using to uh, to light the sodium. Should uh, contain it all, and it uh, all we have to do is just burn the sodium for a while. Have it react with the air. Uh, sodium will react with water to form uh, sodium hydroxide. I think that's what I'm smelling. There's probably a little bit of moisture in the jar, and that's the smell that I can I can smell here. A little bit of moisture in the oil will probably react with the form hy uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, I'm not really looking for a lot of hydrogen peroxide. This is mainly just going to be a test run and see if I can do it. If this does indeed work, I will uh, start making a lot more sodium and uh, scale it up a bit. But, that's what I got in the can. Laser might be able to do it even. Sorry for the wind in advance. I won't be talking that much anyway. We'll just be letting the uh, sodium. Remember to be safe while doing this. Uh, it should be fine as long as you're not going your face directly over it or anything. And uh, here we go. Shift stove here. That's interesting. Oh, maybe the sodium's starting to react. Sodium might be starting to react here. Ah, uh, okay, that hopefully that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. It's a very good sign. You got sodium reacting, I think. Perfect. Uh, stay away from that, though. Looking good, though. Looking good. Oh, I don't know if you can see in there. Oh, there it goes. Looking good. I don't even think that's the, uh... Looks like it. Saw some bright... Some bright, uh, sparks there. Yeah? I think it's working actually. 
keep you updated. Okay, sodium peroxide should be a whitish or yellowish color, if memory serves me correctly. Seems to be working to some degree. I don't actually think it uh, stays lit like that though. That might be the oil burning off, but the, the sodium seems to be reacting anyway. I'll show you again. Yep. There she goes. All right. I don't know how long it's been, just a few minutes, so. I also don't know how long it'll, I guess I'll just go until it stops reacting. Seems decent. More sodium's reacting. Oh, I better, I better get this. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, did it stop? Sparkling a bit there. Good sign. When it does that, that means it's reacting, so. I think I just missed it, but it was sparkling a little bit. Covered. That's why I'm doing it on rocks. That happened on grass. There would now be actually this wouldn't pretty much rack, but actually wouldn't that big that wouldn't have been that much that big of a deal. But still. Crush it up. Yeah, I might have all reacted already. I wonder if my laser could work for this. Might be a thing I do in the future, because this is pretty much all done, basically. Okay, hopefully you can see everything correctly. Uh, let's just get back into it. I want to take some measurements here, because I haven't seen much uh, information on the internet about this, so I want to make sure I uh, get the correct measurements here. I want to see how much of this will make I want to see how much of this will make how how much hydrogen peroxide. Hopefully that sentence made sense. So in this beaker I've got ice and I'm going to add distilled water to it. Now, the reason why we're using ice water is to prevent the decomposition. The hotter it is, uh, the more decomposition occurs and the more hydrogen peroxide we lose. So we want to keep temperature low. Uh, I use like four to five decent sized ice cubes. I'm going to add okay, a little over 100 milliliters of water. Uh, you know what? We'll just leave it at that for now. You can always add more later on. It's easier to add more, but it's really hard to take away more. So, Okay. Now, here's the plan. I could just stir this manually like a peasant, or I could use automatic stirring. Which is, uh, of course, what I'll be doing. I gotta grab a stir bar here. This should work fine. See if it'll make it all the way down. Oh, it did make it all the way down. Nice. A little bit difficult to get it over, though. There we go. Okay, get that stirring. And the ice is messing it up. Maybe I should have thought that through before I added all that ice. If I add more water, it should... Ice should float more. Uh, 275 milliliters of water plus ice. Uh, that's not a very good measurement because I'm using a beaker to measure volume, but whatever. Now, I want to measure out my uh, sodium magnesium aggregate that has now combined with oxygen. We're going to probably have. I'm turning off because it's annoying. We're probably going to have a lot of particles floating around that hasn't dissolved. I don't know the solubility of the magnesium uh, compounds that are in there. I'm not really sure, but we'll just see. See that? Very white, and you can see it's got some gray bits in there. That's the magnesium that is contaminating it. Okay, 1.1 grams, uh, about, okay, 3.0 grams, the scale says. I doubt it's exactly 3.0 grams, but... It'll work fine for this. Turn the stirring back on. And we'll see what happens. I'll zoom in just so you can see what's going on. Alright. Now we're going to add our chunks here. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. Okay. 
This is going to go in. Should react form hydrogen peroxide eventually. According to my notes, the solution should be slightly alkaline. So, I'm going to test that right now. I might not be alkaline just yet, but it should eventually turn out alkaline. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? The solution is alkaline, so we're doing something, right? Awesome. So it is working, it's working. Of course, uh, I'm using distilled water, so, I mean, I'm not going to test... I shouldn't have to test the pH of it, but... The pH should be neutral, of course, because it's distilled water. So there shouldn't be any other impurities messing it up. Just be the... Looks like it's reacting or doing something. I see some sort of... Don't know if it's bubbling in there? Can't really tell exactly. There's some black particles that I'll have to... Honestly, it probably shouldn't even mess it up that badly. It's very cloudy. So, that could very well be impurities, because I'm not familiar exactly with the reaction. I'm kind of working mainly from memory here and just going with the flow. My notes aren't very descriptive as to how the solution looks. This is... I guess I'll just mention, this is the first time I've done this, so... Uh, I'm really hoping it works. Okay, so this has been stirring for roughly... I'd say like five minutes, probably. It's pretty cold to the touch. I can even take the temperature. Temperature is... Like, around like two degrees centigrade. So... I'll take the pH of that. Um, here, I'll use these. I'm not wearing gloves right now. Okay, probably should be wearing gloves. See, the solution is alkaline, pH of 12 to 13, I'd say. pH of 12 to 13, so very alkaline solution, which we are expecting. So now, I wanna do a uh, manganese dioxide test. I will put a little bit of the solution into a test tube with manganese dioxide. If it decomposes, we should have hydrogen peroxide. If it doesn't decompose, we either A, have not made any hydrogen peroxide, or B, it's not concentrated enough. If, if it doesn't react at all, I'll be surprised, but could happen. If so, I'll just add more of this um, sodium peroxide uh, aggregate stuff that I just made, and we'll increase concentration, because of course, the more sodium peroxide we add, the higher the concentration. Here's our manganese dioxide. I really need to clean this, this table off because this is not a very good setup I got going. Okay, I'll point it down at the test tube. Hopefully you can see that all right. I'll even bring this back. Uh, here, I will... I don't want to spill any of this. I should be wearing gloves. I've already bleached my skin a few times from uh, hydrogen peroxide experiments, so... I should have learned my lesson, and I'm going to wear gloves. This isn't dangerous at all. It'll just decompose into its respective parts. If it works, I got a window open just in case. Okay, I'm gonna pull some of this with uh, the eye dropper. It's actually a pretty decent, decently sized eye dropper. Uh, I'll turn this around. All right, here we go. First test. Never done this before, so first time for everything. All right, here we go. Take some of this. Very cloudy and milky. Here we go. Three, two, hold on, put my, put my goggles on. Three, two, one. Anything. It is bubbling. I just saw an air bubble come out. That's a good sign. I doubt it's, it's, it's very concentrated at all because I put a very small amount of that in there. I saw and heard one air bubble come out. Not sure. Okay, I will say that was a barely a pass. That was barely a pass. I saw like one decently sized air bubble come out of that. And I also heard it though, so I'm not going crazy. Uh, hopefully that came up on camera at the very beginning. So that means we do probably we probably have hydrogen peroxide, but if we do have any, it's not concentrated at all, and there's barely any of it. So 
I'm going to continue adding this uh, sodium peroxide and we're going to see if we can get the concentration up. Okay. I could theoretically also filter this to get the magnesium contamination out of it, but I don't, I honestly don't think it's that necessary. Okay, I'll add about 0.3 grams in again. There we go. Okay, I think it has pretty much stopped dissolving, at least all the bits that I want to dissolve in there. And now I can, I'm gonna do the test again. So here we go. Second test, I added some manganese dioxide to the second test tube, and I'm going to see what happens when I put some more of this stuff into there. So I'm going to move this over. Hopefully you can see that all right. It's a second test tube over. I'll zoom in on it. Here we go. Here we go. Pull in a bunch of that. Very milky. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. See some bubbling? Oh yeah, I got some particles in there. Oh yeah, some's happening. Not really sure what. I bet you I barely have much peroxide in here. Which honestly doesn't surprise me. See some bubbling. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna put five more grams of this stuff in there. I just realized a lot of the mass is probably coming from the magnesium contamination. I probably have way less sodium peroxide here than I thought I did. Which means I'm gonna have to add a lot of this stuff in order to get the same amount that I would get if I just had pure sodium peroxide. So I'm going to add a lot more and speed it up. I should probably also crush it, uh, which I will do in my mortar and pestle. All right, so this should be five grams. Hey, right, it's crushed up pretty good. Uh, notice that it's stirring a lot better, which means that the ice has melted pretty much all the way. It's still really cold, though. It's actually producing condensation on the outside. Um, but I thought I'd just mention that. So, in goes the rest. There it all goes. All right, I ended up putting all of the material I had into the beaker. It should be about 10.4 to 10.5 grams of the sodium peroxide mixture in there right now. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna end the video here, but don't go yet because I have a few things I wanna say first. Um, I technically succeeded, but it's not very good. I'm gonna try again, but I'm gonna use less water, and I'm gonna see if I can get a lot more um, sodium peroxide, which means I will have to make more sodium magnesium aggregate. Um, which I won't do right now because burning restrictions, but I will try again later. Once I've got that, I'm going to make a lot more. I'm going to use way less water, and I'm going to run a lot more tests for the next episode. So hopefully you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you next time.